All right, dear viewers, there we have it. Sear flank steak served on uh, palm elegant and asparagus with a wine and bacon and wine reduction sauce. Ladies and gentlemen, to Studio B21. Today we are gonna do a nice meal with some French inspirations. Today's meal, we're going to be doing a base of palm alligot, which is the French cheesy mashed potato, with seared flank steak and uh, a side of asparagus, topped with red wine reduction sauce. All right, let's drop it down, and so that I can show you all the ingredients that we're going to be using today. Here are the ingredients. Flank steak. Asparagus. Potato. Cheese. Unsalted butter. Shallots. Bacon. Fresh thyme. Garlic. Beef demi glass. 25% whipping cream. Red wine. For the full recipe, please uh, scroll down to the details. Everything will be posted. Our viewers, that is all the ingredients now into our prep phase. Our viewers to clean and prepare your asparagus easiest way is to hold the end hold the stem and just bend them until you get a snap what happened is the snapped off part will always be the woodsy is the hard hardest part of the asparagus young tender delicious part will always keep intact To have perfect steak, we're going to cook this beautiful flank steak here with the sous vide method, which is we're going to 
put the herbs, the butter, along with the uh, steak, put it into a vacuum seal bag. Once sealed, we're going to put it into a water bath that is set to 125 degrees, which is perfectly the temperature you want a steak to be at rare. That way, when we sear the steak, we can always, uh, depending on the person you're serving it to, you can always go from rare to medium rare to medium, but it is, it is never easy to go from a higher temperature to a lower. And for flavor, we're sous vide the steak with two cloves of garlic, three sprigs of thyme, one sprig of rosemary, and a tablespoon of butter. Now we're going to leave the steak in there for an hour and a half to two hours. Our viewers, to start off, we're going to cook our potato. Our potato has been peeled and diced. We're going to cook, put enough water in the pot to cover all the potato. We're going to bring it from cold to a boil until all the potato are fork tender. Next, our 470 ml of heavy whipping cream into the pot. One sprig of rosemary, two cloves of garlic. We're going to set it on the stove at low because we don't want the cream to boil. We just want it to warm up enough to extract flavor from the thyme and the, sorry, the extract flavor from the rosemary and the garlic. We're also going to add in two tablespoons of butter. Next, we're going to put our chopped up bacon into the nonstick pan. We're going to let it slowly render until it becomes bacon bits. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now that our bacon has been rendered and become nice and crispy, we're going to, to strain the bacon bits. Strain out all the bacon fat. Next, we're going to turn the heat on the pan, pouring in a small amount of the bacon fat. Let the pan heat up. Now we're going to add about 50 grams of our finely diced shallots. We're going to let that sweat a little. Okay, now that our shallots is nice, nice and sweaty, 
we're gonna deglaze a pan with 300 ml of red wine. To make sure all the brown bits at the bottom of the pan is dissolved. And we're gonna let this wine reduce by half. Use for this pan later on, we're going to transfer the glaze the wine in shallots with all the deglaze nice fawn into a saucepan. Okay, now that our red wine has been reducing, we're gonna add back the bacon bits. Add about a teaspoon of beef demi glace. Now we're gonna all let all of that simmer on low. While the sauce is going, our potato is ready. So take the potato of the heat, strain out all the water. Next, we're going to run through our potato, through our food mill. If you do not have a food mill, what I would suggest is a either a potato ricer is the next best, best thing because if you were to just use a hand press potato masher, the potato will always be lumpy as well as gummy because you overwork the potato starch. We're going to do this in batches. And for people who do have a food mill or a food mill of this type, uh, we're using the fine mesh, uh, fine mesh for the potato. We're going to scrape up the bottom. Our butter and cream mixture with garlic and rosemary has been infusing for about 30 minutes. We're going to strain it. Now we're going to add the cream mixture into the potato slowly until the potato comes to the desired consistency. We're going to fold the cream into the potato. Now that the desired consistency has been reached, we're going to season salt. As you can see, currently we're using Himalayan pink salt. If you're at home, if you do not have pink salt, white table salt will work just fine. Potato is done. Now we're going to set our stove to low because we want some, some heat as we are adding in the cheese. Start off, Swiss cheese, one cup. Greer cheese, also one cup. Now we're going to mix until the cheese and potato are fully incorporated and all the cheese have melted. The end result will be a stringy, stretchy potato. To keep the potato warm while you, you get while we get all of our other components together, we can set our oven to low and we can just put, leave it in the oven because the temperature is set low enough that uh, I would say set about 180 to 200 degrees for your oven 
That way we'll keep uh, the potato warm without co cooking it. All right. Here we have a pot of boiling water seasoned with uh, salt. We're going to blanch our asparagus. Put the asparagus in. Leave it in the hot water for roughly three minutes. Now that our asparagus are, is done, transfer oops, off into the bowl. We're going to shock the asparagus in cold water. It will be best if you have cold water and ice, so it will cool down the vegetable faster. If not, running under cold tap water will work out just as well. Add in the ice. Now we're going to uh, thicken up our sauce. Our wine reduction has been reduced. We've added some more beef stock to the mixture because the reduction was a little bit too low. And to thicken up the sauce, we're going to add slowly a vermeagne, which is a, a mixture of cold butter and flour. Ratio for the mixture is 50-50. So by weight, uh, same amount of flour to butter. We're going to add it slowly and mix it into our sauce. To thicken. Take a whisk. The consistency we're looking for is the sauce able to coat the back of a spoon. Coat the spoon nicely. Set the sauce to the side. Keep it warm. Okay, now our flank steak has been cooking in the water bath for over an hour and a half. You can leave it in there longer if you want. It doesn't matter how long you leave it in the water bath because it's never going to overcook the meat. Our internal temperature has hit rare, which is 120, between 120 and 125 degrees. Now we're going to take it out of the uh, vacuum seal bag. Drain off it as much excess moisture as you can. Pull out some dry paper towel. We're going to pat this flank steak dry because when we are searing the steak, we do not want it to splatter. And when you pat it dry, this is also how most restaurants actually, this is actually the only way to get a nice crispy crust on any steak is by removing as much moisture from the surface of the meat as possible before it even hits the pan. Liberals, uh, liberally season your steak with salt and pepper. All right, now we're going to sear our steak. Okay, our pan is smoking hot with the bacon fat we reserved safe earlier. There we go. Beautiful crust. 
Now, okay, onto a rack, let it rain. Now we're going to let the steak rest for minimum of five minutes. Resting the steak will allow, during the cooking process, all the juices, all the fats are forcing to the center of the meat. Resting it allows the meat to cool down a bit, allow the muscle to redistribute all that beautiful juice back into surrounding muscle. If we were to cut this into now, all the juice is going to flow out, it's going to look nice, but you're going to have a dry, tough steak. All right, we have a nice smoking pot, sorry, wok going. Adding butter. Put the butter milk. Shallots. We want the butter to brown to add more, some flavor to the mixture. Okay, so let the uh, shots sweat a little bit. Now we add in our asparagus. Season. Salt. Pepper. Gonna hit it with a small amount of dry white wine. And you see up too high. Once the asparagus has uh, fully heated through, it is done. Now that our asparagus, asparagus is done, we will set it to the side. Now we're going to add a bit of sheen to the sauce. This is the trick that um, restaurants do. Warm up your sauce. Have cold butter on hand. Sauce is bubbling. That's all we need. Turn off the heat. Put it off the heat. Put in your cold butter. And now slowly let the butter melt. What we're going to do is just slowly turn the pan while the butter melts. We're slowly emulsifying, incorporating the mixing the butter into our sauce. There we go. Sauce is done. This step we would do right before we are ready to serve. It's been five minutes. We have rested our steak. Remember for flank steak, you always want to cut against the grain. If you cut with the grain of the muscle, it's going to be chewy and tough. If you cut it against, where you cut through all the muscle, it's going to be a nice and tender steak. First cut. All right, dear viewers, there we have it. Sear flank steak, serve on uh, palm aligo and asparagus with a wine and bacon and wine reduction sauce.
Okay. If you like what we have done here today, please like and subscribe and hopefully become a premium member where you can suggest uh, recipes that we can try and we will make it on the channel.